we have been sent a disc and a statement. It was postmarked Essex, well outside the Carl area. It doesn't mention cattle, it doesn't mention bovine TB. It talks instead about the damage that badgers do to wildlife on the ground, from hedgehogs to harvest mice and ground nesting birds from oyster catchers to English partridge. It also suggests they're shooting badgers. Badger shooting is still illegal, except under licence or if you're destroying a sick or injured animal. However, this film shows the strength of feeling in the countryside about badgers which, protected by law, are wiping our countryside clean at night. The overpopulation means the animals are turning up in surprising places. This is a badger's set near my home in the southwest of England. It's on a road. It's lucky this government calls it a badger problem. Some governments would call this a housing problem. Whatever you think of people shooting badgers willy-nilly, the debate is currently bogged down between farmers and badger huggers. The farmers have a lot more to lose. Stars such as Brian May might say he deplores it, but some of his animal rights activist gang have threatened to burn down barns and superglue supermarket cash point machines in protest against the cull. They have already spray painted an office of the National Farmers Union's insurance arm, NFU Mutual, in Gloucestershire. They have threatened farmers and their families in the cull areas and say they will wait out at night on roads and around sets armed with walkie-talkies in order to sabotage the cull. Filmmaker Chris Chapman, who has spent years recording the effect on farmers of government mishandling a first BSC, then foot and mouth, and now bovine TB, has strong views about where responsibility for looking after badgers should lie. I mean, Brian May, I've written to Brian, I've written to him in the past, uh, he's a very intelligent man, but he's missing the point. He's missing the point. He's, it, it, it's, it's become too emotive, and, and, it's, and, and, and because you know, emotion tends to override common sense. Common sense tells us there is a big problem in the countryside. It isn't like foot and mouth because the public can't see it. You know, this is a this is a hidden disease. They understood foot and mouth of 2001 because when they sat down at night and watch the television, they could see all these cattle on burning pyres. So, so that, was, that was brought into their living room night after night after night. This is a hidden disease. How do you show the public this disease? Very, very difficult. But it's there. You can't deny it is there. For more about Chris's work, go to bovinetb.info. Scroll right down to the bottom and click on a link called Bovine TB Away Ford. If you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to Chris's latest film. Chris lives on Dartmoor in Devon. Despite Field Sports Channel's good links with the farming community across the southwest, we could not find a single farmer in the Cull area in Somerset prepared to go on camera. All of them tell me they do not want to become a target. Despite what Mr May would like you to believe, our furry friends do not die in their beds surrounded by their grandchildren. Here is badger specialist Richard Gard speaking to Chris Chapman in one of his films about bovine TB. You can see the extended claws. This animal has had a very difficult end to its life. It's been unable to dig properly to forage for its food. This is fairly typical of the situation that we see. The set had been impregnated by rats, they'd been feeding on the carcass. The other side of this carcass is quite badly eaten and it's possible that this one was dragged out by a fox. It's been nibbled all over the place. This situation with the unhealthy badgers is really important to be aware of. They don't have a simple existence from life right through to death. Farmers, shooters, country people, we're all after a healthy population of badgers. But you don't get that without management. Celebrity chef Clarissa Dixon-Wright wants healthy badgers because she likes eating them. When I was young, badger was still very much eaten in country districts, quite legally. Uh, it solved the badger crisis, wouldn't it? Um, because pubs in the West Country used to have a badger ham on the bar. Um, well, and sort of like, a, like a ham on a barricade. Like, like Serrano ham? That's yeah, absolutely, made with banjo. It's very good, it was too. Was it fatty? 
the same way. Did it have that rich... It did have that rich depth of flavour about it. Did you think, you know, badger, what it eats, and it's very much on a par with a pig. So, what number of badgers to have? As shooters know, wildlife management is not an exact science. In the field sports community, we know there are a lot of foxes, but we can't say how many. We know there are not enough hedgehogs, and we are sure there are too many badgers. Scientists discovered the link between badgers and bovine TB in the 1970s. The explosion in the badger population since then has meant an explosion in bovine TB. These maps show how fast it has spread. The disc we were sent. Clarissa on cooking and the destruction of the British cattle herd. It's all about the same thing. It's about putting wildlife management back into the hands of country people and taking it away from the urban whingers who don't understand it.